Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I rise to visit a moment with my colleagues, both Republican and Democrat, about an ongoing debate that we are having over the appropriateness to have policy issues decided, debated and then decided in appropriation bills. We're now at the stage in our legislative process in which it looks like we're going to complete our work on the final spending bill the, the, for the fiscal year that ended a few months ago, and that by December 11th, when the continuing resolution concludes, that we very well may have an appropriation bill that takes us into the new year completed. There are some in the Senate who have argued that within this appropriation bill, there is no place for policy writers, for provisions in that bill that direct, in a more specific way, how we spend money. Uh, I would say that that is a terrible mistake on the part of members of the Senate to reach that conclusion. And I would say it's wrong for our country. Uh, it's wrong based upon the Constitution of the United States that creates three co-equal branches of government. The legislative branch, we know what our role is, which is to legislate, to create the laws, uh, to appropriate the money. And there cannot be a distinction between legislating and appropriating money. They end up being the same thing, that when we appropriate money, we are directing an administration to conduct themselves according to that appropriation bill. But we have, particularly in this case, a few Democrats who are arguing that there shouldn't be any policy riders included in that appropriation bill. I doubt that we would hear that from Democrats if this was a Republican president and a Democrat Congress. And in my view, it ought not be any different. Congress's role is to make decisions about how money is spent, and for too long, Congress has given up the power of the purse string. Why this is a significant development in our constitutional history is because in giving up the power of the purse string, we authorize the executive branch, though that branch of government that is to execute the laws, to administer the laws, to have significantly more power. And the American people and our Constitution is harmed when any executive, this president, previous presidents, future presidents, exceed the authority granted to them by the United States Constitution. Sometimes I think we end up uh, supporting presidential decisions that we agree with and oppose those, obviously, that we disagree with. But the reality is, if those decisions are unconstitutional, if they exceed the authority that Congress has granted an executive branch, they ought to be denied, regardless of whether we agree with those decisions or not. In other words, the Constitution should trump. And in my view, again, this Congress and many who have preceded us have taken a, the opportunity to be a, in the back seat and granting authority or allowing presidents to consume additional power well beyond the Constitution. So, Madam President, uh, I am here to encourage my colleagues, Republicans and Democrats, to re-exert our constitutional grant of authority to legislate. And we ought not pay undue deference to an executive branch, whether the president is a Republican or a Democrat. I would say that in the time I've been a United States senator, in this first term of my term in office, we have seen an executive branch that has continued to increase its power and authority to exceed, in my view, its constitutional grant of authority, and in so many instances, uh, exceed the authority granted to them by a statute, a piece of legislation passed by the House, passed by the Senate, and sent to the President. The President should be able only to do those things which are granted to him or her by the Constitution or by legislative enactment pursuant to the Constitution. And that seemingly has been forgotten uh, during the recent history of our country. Congress holds the power of the purse string. There are many of us, Republicans and Democrats, who would like to direct the executive branch in how money is spent. The appropriation bill ultimately will determine how much money is spent, but in addition to that, we have the ability to direct whether that spending can occur, shouldn't occur, or how it should occur. I offered uh, on the Senate floor, in fact, some of you have, have heard me speak previously. Uh, I think all of you have heard me speak previously. Some of you may remember about a particular 
provision that I wanted included in the Interior and Environment Appropriation Bill related to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the designation of the lesser prairie chicken as a threatened species. Uh, we've had this conversation, in fact, in a bipartisan way, uh, way that uh, issue was voted on on the Senate floor. It was approved, but that legislation that it was attached to did not become law. So now the opportunity to instruct a federal agency arises as we appropriate the money for them to operate. There is five states in the middle of the country, New Mexico, Texas, Colorado, Kansas, uh, and uh, Oklahoma that have felt the uh, consequences of a decision made by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to list the lesser prairie chicken as a threatened species. The issue that is so troublesome to me is those five states had come together to solve this problem on their own without the heavy hand of the federal government. And conservation practices were being put in place the U.S. Department of Agriculture was providing technical and financial assistance to conservation efforts to landowners to provide the incentives to put voluntary conservation practices in place across those five states. And yet the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, in my view, only paid lip service to those conservation efforts. Their actions spoke louder than the words, and they listed the uh, lesser prairie chicken as threatened. This decision at that point in time didn't provide enough time for local plans to prove their effectiveness. And really the reality is the problem in our state and across that region of the country was we didn't have moisture. We didn't have adequate snowfall. We didn't have adequate rainfall. And when you have little or no rain, you have little or no habitat. You can't solve that problem without moisture. Uh, and now the rains have returned. And in fact, over the last two years, just as you would predict, as common sense would tell us, if there's more rain, there's more habitat, there's more birds. And the most recent uh, census of the lesser prairie chicken indicates that in the last two years, the population of that bird, that species, has increased by 50%. Again, common sense tells us if there's rain, if there's moisture, there's habitat, then the birds return. So as the rainfall has returned, the habitat is growing and is healthy again, and local surveys indicate what we would expect. The bird's population is again increasing. One might think it would therefore be useful to take a second look at the listing. Despite our request to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, they dismissed that with little thought that as the species has returned, that maybe no longer it should be listed. So the opportunity that I and others have to rein in decisions that we believe are poorly made, lack common sense, are unreasonable, occurs in this appropriations process. And my guess is that all of my colleagues have certain issues in which they want to direct a federal agency about how to behave, what rules and regulations are appropriate, where we believe they've exceeded their authority, or where they just simply lack the common sense or sound science to, make, to, to have made an appropriate decision. There are some who say you shouldn't legislate on an appropriation bill. An appropriation bill is a legislative effort, and it would be wrong for us not to take the opportunity to direct agencies on behalf of the American people, on behalf of the constituents, in my case of Kansas, who feel very strongly about this issue and have suffered the consequences of the listing of the lesser prairie chicken by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So despite the practical reasons that this listing should be reversed, the agency is not listing, listening, and we therefore ought to take the opportunity to direct their behavior in a legislative way. Whether or not an amendment is approved is decided here in the Senate by a majority vote. Uh, and I would tell you that in the case of this issue, uh, again, the amendment was offered in the Appropriations Committee. It is included in the uh, interior appropriation bill. The House has adopted similar language in their appropriation bill. And so for those who say this is inappropriate, this is the legislative process as it should be. This is United States senators, members of the U.S. House of Representatives speaking on behalf of their constituents in a very constitutional and appropriate way. It is important for us to utilize our authority as members of Congress to make decisions that benefit our country as we see best 
uh, and we ought to work together to accomplish that. There will be riders, provisions that are offered that, I will, that are included in an appropriation bill that I will disagree with. But the appropriations process ought to work, and I, as a member of the Appropriations Committee and as a member of the United States Senate, want to see us get back to the days in which the power of the legislative branch uh, is uh, able, is to be utilized, and to make certain that we uh, make decisions on how we spend the money. So, Madam President, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be on the Senate floor today to, to speak as we move, apparently, next week toward the, the appropriation bill and its conclusion. And I just would say that in a bipartisan way, we ought to work together to find opportunities to solve pro problems that our constituents and Americans face. And the legislative process is a way that we can do that. It's not inappropriate. In fact, it's the constitutional response to an abuse of power in an executive branch, whether it's a Republican executive branch or a Democrat executive branch. We ought to work together as members of Congress and with our utilizing our constitutional authority to make appropriate decisions for the American people. Madam President, I ask unanimous consent